Today, I'm going to show you how a wind pilot works. Not how to use it, how it actually works. And controls the boat to stay on course. Why would you care? Because the engineering is freaking incredible and deserves 10 minutes of your time. Because if you understand this, you will be a better sailor and understand how to use a wind vane properly. And because it interests me and you and me, we're the same. A few weeks back we installed our hydrovane and did a first shakedown sail from mainland Europe to the Canary Islands. It took us 4 days in a 36 foot boat which is really quick. We hit 12 knots regularly and we didn't touch the wheel nor the hydrovane more than once or twice a day. For many, the Canary Crossing is the most stressful leg on the classic Atlantic round, but we had a blast. First of all, we had amazing crew and second of all, the Hydrovane steered confidently down surfing waves, exceeding hull speed multiple times. So get your pencils out, make notes, this is part of your finals. After watching this video, you will understand this kind of vane, which is a servo pendulum system, as well as the auxiliary rudder vane, which is in our case the hydrovane. So first of all, imagine a steady wind direction and the boat sailing through the water on a set angle to the wind. That means the sails have to be trimmed and as a result, there is technically no angle on the boat's rudder. What I'm saying is, we're going in a straight line. We have one goal today, and that is to keep the angle to the wind so we do not have to adjust the sails. So let's look at the tasks and abilities of the helmsman. He needs to have a brain. The brain determines if we are on the desired angle of the wind or if we need to make corrections, and if so, how much and in which direction. He needs to have muscle. Find the energy to actually turn the rudder and he needs to coordinate both to turn the rudder based on the brain's instructions. In our scenario, the helmsman will make small corrections to bring the boat back on a 90 degree wind angle. And a wind pilot does exactly that. It makes sure we stay 90 degrees to the apparent wind. So technically, the wind pilot is not actively steering the boat, but controlling it based on incoming information. Technically speaking, he's a controller. That's the difference. He's a slave to the instructions, just like the helmsman. Thank you. Thank you. A wind pilot has to understand the desired angle to the wind and if there is a deviation to that angle. Since it uses no electricity, it is going to be mechanically programmed to do that. It also needs to mechanically find natural forces and turn force into controllable energy. That energy has to be directed towards the steering system that finally moves the rudder. A few things to keep in mind that make sense in a minute or two. First of all, a turning motion requires less energy than a tilting motion. If I have energy of a tilting motion that I convert into a turning motion, that gives the turning motion more torque. Next, moving an object through air is easy. Moving an object underwater is quite hard. Also, imagine being a child in your parents' car. Remember when you rolled down the window and put your hand out on the highway and then started doing this? And your arm did that. This is the basic principle of how a small signal movement can harness a lot of energy. All right, enough of that. Let's admire this three-dimensional scene and the upcoming sketches of the wind pilots. Okay, so here we have a boat moving through water with the wind coming from 90 degrees port side. Like every wind pilot, the servo pendulum pilot sits on the stern of the boat. The airborne part of the pilot is the wind vane. Its main function is to determine if the ship is deviating from the desired angle and give a signal to an oar that is underwater. The oar's main function is to react to the wind vane and find forces in the water to turn the main steering. The connection to the main steering. Usually this is a set of lines to the wheel or directly to the quadrant. The vane is set to have no deflection when the boat is on course. It can rotate around its own axis, so we can turn the vane with the leading edge into the wind. This way there is no point of attack for the wind. And as soon as the boat turns, or the angle of the wind changes, the wind vane gets hit from the side, and it deflects. 
it tilts on a hinge, one way or the other. This deflecting tilt motion is translated into a rotation of the underwater oar. The oar is facing the leading edge forward. When the oar gets rotated it offers a point of attack for the water flow and the oar tilts to one side or the other. This way it takes energy from the movement through the water and the whole arm gets lifted. The steering system of the boat and the oar are connected with lines, either to the wheel or directly to the quadrant. The bigger the movement of the oar, the more the lines pull on the steering and that turns the main rudder of the boat. As soon as the wind angle is back to the 90 degrees that we set it to, the wind vane tilts upright, that turns the oar back and it drops down to its neutral position. The lines pull the rudder straight. The hydrovane works differently but uses the same principles. It harnesses natural forces and turns it into controllable energy. The hydrovane doesn't have an oar but a way bigger wind vane because it harnesses the energy of the wind to turn the rudder. Since the energy content of wind is lower than water, it needs to increase surface area. But I guess I'll show you for real now. It's a bit windy, so I hope you can hear me. But the great thing about it is that the wind vane actually does something based on the incoming winds. So here you see it. This wind vane is comparably bigger than the ones for the servo pendulum systems. This is the main unit that translates the movements. And down here, we would have a rudder which I detached because it's not nice to navigate through the water in a marina with an auxiliary rudder. So you can take that off. You can also take off the wind vane. So all you have left when you don't use it is the main unit and the struts right there. The main force is on the lower brackets. So this needs to be super tight and stable. These ones as well flush to the surface, but there's not that much force coming on these two. So for everyone who noticed, there's another exhaust for our diesel heater. On the inside, you can see that there's actually lots of space and this is quite stable, so no concern here. But let's get into the unit. It's already engaged, so you can see I faced the leading edge into the wind. And now if I have a gust that comes from one side or the other, the vane starts moving to one side or the other. And you can see here, there is a strut that pushes force downwards and that is the force of the wind and not the force of the water. But since the gear ratio is massive, like this movement up here is probably a meter and translate that to this movement here, you will realize that there's a lot of force for that amount of movement compared to what the wind vane does. So this one gets translated as a push down into this casing and down here, let, let me make that bright for you. There you go, now you see it. Now down here, this is where the strut comes in and pushes down or pulls up depending on the direction of the vein movement. So that is on a hinge, which then in turn gets translated into lateral motion right here. And this is enough to move the rudder. You can see here that you have different gears, so to say. Like if I push this to one side, the one that translates the motion, the, the pin that translates the motion is attached further up. So you have more force, but less movement. So if I push that down now, then there's more rudder movement, but less force in the rudder. I can also disengage the whole system. If I move that pin, that center, you can see that I can move the rudder. 
This is my tiller. That I can move the rudder without any vein movement. And it's actually locked in place. So there's one more thing that might interest you. I was always explaining a 90 degree angle, but in real life, you want to have any wind angle that you want. So what you can do is, you use these lines to turn this piece of engineering, which actually turns the vane with the leading edge into the wind. So some of you commented on the last video saying, well, if this vane, because it does, touches the bimini right here, why don't you just turn it around? Well, I can tell you, if it's not the leading edge that's in the wind, but the non-leading edge, then the result would be the exact opposite rudder movement that I need. So that wouldn't work. So I do need to be able to turn this vane 360 degrees and have it deflect, let's say 90, 80, 80 90% of the way in any direction. So that's very important, especially if you also build that kind of stuff. Other models of wind vanes have different wind vanes for different wind conditions. The hydro vane doesn't. It's like a one for all solution and we only used it on one crossing and it worked well. But if you have different conditions, you can adjust that vane instead of exchanging it. Because you can simply tilt it backwards. That means that the surface area up here that is high power compared to this one, which is like not really high powered because it's closer to the hinge, gets less attack and that means it's depowered but that also means that you need even more space on the stern of your boat to be able to use it thank god 99% of the time you don't have to use that setting and in the 1% that you do need it you'd better be in a harbor i guess a wind vane teaches you to become a better sailor in two different ways first of all you have to balance your boat for it to work that means keeping the boat at a certain angle to the wind with little to no weather helm. Weather helm is the tendency of a boat to always steer into the wind. And many, if not most production sloops always have that tendency. And you counteract that by moving the rudder a few degrees in the opposite direction. So ideally you balance your boat so much that you don't even need a wind pilot. If you want to be picky about it, then the pilot is only there to counteract changes in wind direction because your boat goes in a straight line halfway across the Atlantic on that tack. But in reality, the vane works great and it forgives, but you can see when it seemingly works too hard in the conditions given. And then you'd have to look at your sails and trim those. The second way the wind pilot teaches you to become a better sailor is honestly mind blowing. You basically just put your hand on the tiller and listen with your hand. The corrections to the wind angle are instant. There's no delay, no calculations, nothing. It's just, it's physics. And the pilot follows the laws of physics and the engineered instructions 100% all the time. So there's no human error, no mistake. It's always the right correction and it's always instant. Watch this if you haven't seen our hydrovane installation video or watch this if you already have and this randomly selected video suits your preference. Thanks for taking the time to learn today. Keep being awesome. Bye bye.